everyone, this is Loomis, and today I'm going to be doing a solo mid learning with Lumi series. And what better way to look at the solo mid position than to look at Navi Dendi himself. If you don't know who Dendi is, the team that he plays on is Navi. And that's the team that won a million dollars at the international tournament. Considered to be the best Dota 2 team at the moment. Also, Dendi himself is the, of course, a solo mid position, uh, solo mid player for, uh, for Navi for most of the time. And he's also by far the most popular professional streamer, uh, professional gamer that streams on on 3D, I believe. I'll include his stream uh, in the description box below. But yeah, he's by far the most popular uh, streamer. He's he has a very fun playstyle. He has a very aggressive playstyle. But forget all of that. Today we're gonna be looking at his solo mid game. And boy, he has a very very good solo mid game. And not just any type of solo mid game. We're gonna look at how aggressive he is. And uh, one thing that really strikes me about Dendi when he's playing the mid position is when he turns on the aggression, it's an instant. But also when he's getting ganked or when he's in trouble, he always finds a way to escape. So we're going to be looking at three replay here for Dendi today and looking how he's going to be playing the solo mid position. So the first game, it is going to be a Queen of Pain. I know it says a Glutar there, but that is actually... Um, Actually, Dendi himself. Uh, you can see that he has actually random the Korean pain, so he's got about 800 gold. I could assure you that on the other side, the Shadow Fiend, his uh, lane enemy, also has random as well, so there's not going to be any gold difference. So both guys are in a very even position. So Dendi walks in the lane, and out of the replays I've checked out for Dendi, which is about 20 to 30 solo mid replays, uh, one thing I've really noticed about his, his mid play. Uh, and it's not surprising at all is how good he is on the technical aspect. I'm talking about lasting everything and denying practically everything. And as I say that, he missed a, a couple of creep kills or so. Choosing the last set and deny against the Shadow Fiend this early on is a very, very good choice. Uh, because, well, Shadow Fiend needs to get those last sets to get his uh, soul damage up. So if you see that, he just made a very, very tiny move, and if you blink, you probably just miss it. Go Feel free to rewind back if necessary. Um, we're about 40 seconds into the lane, and he first time checked. He clicked on the Shadow Fiend and saw a bottle, a south, no, a bottle, a tango, and three GG branch. Something like that. Let's let's quickly check. Yeah, that's that's what he saw. And that's a very, very key thing. It might be it's like a small thing. It's very, very important to see what your enemy has in terms of items, because... because uh, you know, depending on the items he has, you can react very, very differently. For example, if he has a boost of speed, well, that means he doesn't have enough gold for regen. So I'm going to slow down, down the replay right now. You can see that Dendi has actually tangled up. Why? His HP is very, very high. And we're going to see just why right now. We're at level 2, and Dendi is blinking right in to go for a kill. And this is exactly what I mean about Dendi when he turns on the heat. It's an instant. It's an instant turn on. Well, that sounds really wrong, but um, you guys know what I'm saying. And, and there, there was a lot of small plays that Dendi just made over there. And he's going to get up. He's going to get the first blood with this blink cooling down just a bit. Of course, his screen and pain are ready to go. So he's going to blink in, grab the first blood. But um, two things that he did there that was very, very small. And if you blinked, you missed it. Number one is he tangled up as he's going to buy his bottle now. Um, he tangled up even though his HP is really high because he knows he's going to be trading hits. He knows he's going to be initiating on. Uh, and be throughout all that, he had about 8 HP regen per second, and Shadow Fiend probably had like 1 or 0 0.9 HP regen per second. And because of that, Shadow Fiend was getting out regen for that duration of the battle, and uh, Shadow Fiend simply cannot stay for that long, and because of that, he got right clicked down by Dendi very nicely. Number 2, look at Dendi's, or if you need to rewind, if you remember, Dendi's blink position was so good, Shadow Fiend was right next to the creeps. And because of that, uh, he was sandwiched between, uh, he could not get it back to his tower. And he was really sandwiched in between the creep wave and Dendi himself. And uh, as Shadow Fiend right clicked the Queen of Pain back, he also drew creep aggro. And that's off, off of Dendi's really, really good blink positioning. And now we have him some very standard harassment. Because Dendi has got his magic bottle, he's really uh, just letting the Shadow Fiend have it. And he's going to be checking for the rune. And look at his positioning check of the rune. He's going to just skirt just basically edge over it Ooh, sorry about that you basically edge over it and just make sure he saw the rune and it was not there so he's gonna ch immediately come back and he's gonna try to go back to the lane now one thing about the bottle play which then he's not exactly showing in this game is that you want to push the the lane before the four minute mark 
because that's when the rune spawns. And uh, if you push the lane before the 4 minute mark, well, that means that the, uh, the you're going to ensure that you're going to get the rune. So he knows the rune is not top. Shadowfiend also checked. Now Shadowfiend knows the rune is not top of himself. Well, but anyways, uh, the regen rune is going to be on the bot. Brutus Speed gets picked up here by Dendi. And, if, and, and there you go. Check the, I think he checked his... Uh, Inventory again. I, at the very least, I don't think Shadowfin has the Breach of Speed. No, he does not. So that means that for the next engagement that's going to be happening, Denji's going to have the advantage. And it's it's easy for me to you know just go go over to on this other side and and check the item and be like, oh yeah, Denji's going to have the advantage. As you see, that Denji has a Regen Rune and going to be using that Regen Rune to his full potential. Going to be trading a lot of hits before popping it much later on. Yep, Screen of Pain is going to cool down and it's going to basically scare away the Shadow Fiend. Now most players would here would be like, oh I scare away the Shadow Fiend, let me just hit the Creep Wave a little bit. Then he says, I'm going to just hit him. No problem there, he's going to pop the regen. And now keep in mind that we have our Breach of Speed. And Shadow Fiend does not. And this is a very easy time to go for a kill. Look at how aggressive Dendi is, just blinking behind the tower. And he's pretending that he's going to back off for now, but keep in mind that Shadow Fiend is literally one Scream of Pain, scream of pain away from death. Four minutes in, we're gonna check top rune, not gonna be there. Shadow Fiend single bit position. Gonna be one blink, scream. Then he's gonna just chase under the tower, no problem. Looks like his creep wave is gonna be tanking it. And then another kill is gonna be right here. Excuse Look at how easy that was for Dendi. It was almost 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 too easy. And that's the first replay I wanna show you. Something simple, just standy, just only really, really hard. He proceeded to grab a couple more runes and just dominate the mid game from there. So as we go into replay number two, I want to bring up a couple important points that Dendi really executed executed very well in that game. First thing that really was big was the two times that he checked the items on the Shadow Fiend. First time he checked it, no boots of speed, just a bottle and a sal or just a bottle and tango. Could fully take advantage of that. Second time checked it was after he bought his boots of speed, which I, I think he checked it. I'm not 100% sure, but he should have checked it if he didn't. Um, at that time, he would have seen that, hey, Shadow Fiend did not have boots of speed, and I do. So that means I could go on the Shadow Fiend, and that's exactly what he did. Also, very good control of his regen rune, and popped it after he was literally out of mana and out of HE. So he got basically full use of his, uh, full use of his uh, regen rune. Give me a moment to actually find a second replay Seconds to battle. First blood. All right, let's jump back into the second game here, and it looks like he's going to be playing Ancient Apparition. Let us go to player's perspective for Dendi himself. Okay, I shouldn't. Be, yeah, he's controlling. Okay, I'm not doing anything. Anyways, Dendi's going to be playing Ancient Apparition. So right off the bat, there's going to be a key difference from this game and last game. Last game, you saw Dendi in the early outset of laning. He was really prioritizing on last hitting instead of harassing. And again, that's the right choice because you're already up against Shadow Fiend. So um, when Shadow Fiend gets the souls, he's going to be doing quite a bit of damage. Now he's going to be going against a Necrolite. And Necrolite works up a little bit differently. It's, it doesn't really come down to uh, last hits as much. And you can see that he's just letting, right off the bat, he's letting that Necrolite have it. Now in this game, again, we're going to be focusing on Dendi's aggression as he's still very, very good in terms of technical aspect, which is, you know, lasting and denying. But he's also very good in, in, in terms of controlling where that Necrolite goes. Because of a spell, because of Kofi, 
has a very, very easy time in terms of saying, hey, I want you to back off right now. And uh, that's when, whenever he feel, when he feels the need, so he's going to drop a Kofi on the enemy hero. If you notice when he's dropping the Kofi, it's generally when his creeps are about to die, he's turning on the harass. And when that's happening, that means the Necrolite will not be able to, to grab the creep kill. You can say, hey, there's a low HP creep. Let's harass Necrolite away a little bit. And then get to deny ourselves. Again, a very small part of solo mid position. But a very, very important part indeed. So far, I still haven't seen whether Dendi have checked his... Oh, there you go. Just the thing. Uh, very, very, again, very important from game, the replay number one we just saw. Very important to check out actually what item they have and he, he did so fast I'm not too sure what he had so let's quickly check that out okay he's got a stout shield very interesting and a couple of restorative and whatnot so very standard here then he laying on the harass keeping that necrolite very very low necklace is gonna burn that self no big deal Dendi himself need to burn that self as well and again he's just look at where he's camping on the enemy ledge it does not care that he's taking gonna be taking a couple of points of, of harass but now that he's going to be running out south, and he's going to be able to tango up. So that might be an instance that he's being a little bit over-aggressive. And this replay will have a couple of uh, good scenes to really sh signify that Dendi is maybe a little bit over-aggressive against his enemy here. Because he was uh, camping on the enemy ledge, which generally is a good move to do. And what I mean by camping the enemy ledge is basically you edge yourself in between the creep wave and the enemy hero. If you have a very like potent spell, uh, let's say you're very tinker or something like that, you can easily scare away the enemy hero because you threat to nuke them. And generally, if they back off at that point, that means you won the lane. Then they try to do that right now, but Necrolyte says, I'm going to run in there and heal against you, no problem. So then he took quite a bit of damage about that, uh, but he should be okay because his magic bottle is coming right now. Then they are, is not really uh, fully checking the Necrolyte's item right now, uh, but... Not too big of a deal. Again, Dendi doing a very good job keeping the Necrolite back and having the bottle regen. He's going to fully take it again. If you see Dendi really, when he's walking up the hill like that, that means that he feels he's ahead. He's going to try to dominate the lane. He's a haste run on top. That's very, very nice. And again, Kofi going to be go coming right off against the Necrolite. Even though Necrolite be able to stay in lane to grab the EXP, Shaker comes in with the haste run. And this is the a very, very precursor of how dangerous it is to play as aggressive that Denzi's going to be playing. We're going to watch how he escapes from this game. Gank is going to just go back to base. Now, a lot of players would just gone back to base and would have died. But look at Dendi. He realized that there's a haste of Shaker running around. And look at the minimap. Shaker was going for the kill. Strong awareness by Dendi knowing he had no wards up. He literally had no wards up. I can assure you that if he, this was a pro game that he was playing for Na'Vi, uh, the top river would have been warded. He would have known that Shaker was coming with the haste rune. And he would not even got into that terrible position in the first place. So that's kind of uh, earlier when I said, well, this is not a pro game. Um, so and, and because of that, he was a little bit disadvantaged in that regard. But no big deal. He has survived that. It's going to make a very, very small move right here. TP's Ryzen immediately drop off a cold feed. And look at his mana regeneration. He just lost 40 mana for dropping 150 mana nuke. And the reason that he could do that is because the fountain provides regen for about 3 seconds after you leave uh, the fountain. Sometimes you TP into the a tower or something like that. Your HP is not really full, but you're going to be regening very quickly. Then you realize that and be able to drop off of basically a Kofi for free, literally. And that's a, that's are the those are the small things that you could really take advantage of uh, and, and kind of g give yourself a very small edge. Uh, in the lane. You can see that he just checked Necrolite, had, I think, a double damage rune? Yeah, a double damage rune and a magic stick. So that's going to be important. The magic stick is going to be important in terms of the next engagement happening. Double damage gets popped, but Necrolite is the one that's turning back. Again, look at Dendi's positioning compared to the Necrolite's positioning. He's constantly in front of the creep wave, yet Necrolite is the one that's turning back. They're going to be trading a couple of nukes. It is Necrolite that should be having the lane advantage because he has a double damage. But Dendi, again, very good use of his Kofi, says, I want you to leave. And that's exactly what Necrolite has to do. Necrolite comes back, another Kofi uh, is going to be threatened to drop on him. And this maybe is a sign of how strong Dendi's hero is. But really, I can assure you, he would be doing a very good job with just about any other hero that he would be playing. So, uh, 
it, this this hero, I guess, is, in essence, really fits his aggressive playstyle. Another cold feet, harassing Necrolite away. In fact, Necrolite, a couple more right clicks from Death and Dandy again. The aggressive player he is, going to be going for it. Now he's going to guess wrong here as he guesses to the right side and he's going to miss the Necrolite. He's not going to chase. Uh, neither players have boots of speed, so really it would not produce into any chase. And he's going to go back in the lane. You know, but go back to denying. Controlling the lane back. The 6th rune is going to be spawning in just a bit. Now, one thing about the 6th rune is that it turns nighttime right now. Before the 6th rune actually happens. And because of that, you have to go a little bit deeper into the river to actually scout that rune. Which can be annoying. And in fact, it is very, very annoying indeed. It scares away the Necrolite. Necrolite's going to turn back. And he's going to be getting that bot rune. He turns level 6, so he's going to go for a blast kill. I want to see how cl look, look at how close he's guessing on the Necrolite. He's eventually going to miss because Necrolite's going to see the A blast coming. The tower provides his true sight over the A blast. But look at how close his guess was. And this is no map hack. He has no wards or anything. It's just, it's just perception of the map. And as you play more games and more games and more games like Dota, uh, Dendi's probably playing thousands of games of Dota. Uh, you, you just kind of know exactly what's happening. So this game showcasing really good perceptive play um, in terms of he realizes where the enemy heroes are. Now there's always a very cool trick uh, that you could use with the Illusion Rune, especially if you know the next rune is going to be spawning soon. Illusion Rune I think lasts about 45 seconds. So what you can do instead of you know letting the enemy nuke it down like this, is you can actually send it to the, the river. Um, each One at each rune spot. Uh, they could act as mobile wards, and it looks like we're going to have a little bit of engagement here. Dendi not backing off. is going to get a kill for sure here. Yep, shatters enemy and go for kill. So you can use the illusion runes to scout, and it's going to be buying something. And look at the minimap. Here's, here's where Dendi's going to get killed. And again, that's a byproduct of not having wards up. Uh, it, it's not Dendi's making a mistake. Well, probably you could consider it as Dendi made a mistake because, well, he got killed, and... Um, but I'm, I'm going to say that Dendi did not have wards up because he didn't. And he did not see the shaker roaming down. So he got picked off there. So that was replay number two. Now, of course, Dendi did not have the best solo mid position here. Let me, oh, let me, before I, I keep going on about this statement, let me preface by saying that um, out of like the 30 replay I've saw, I've really watched like, quite a bit of Dendi replays. Out of the 30 replays I've saw, about 70% of it was just like game number one where Dendi was just dominating like from start to finish he was just owning hard and uh, I thought well you know watching him dominate time and time and time after game may not be very interesting may not be a very good learning experience so I had to pick specifically some replays where Dendi did not perform the best and whatnot or where his laning uh, his opponent had a laning advantage over him or something like that. So I, I, I specifically look for replay like that. And this replay number two, we showcase good awareness by Dendi uh, in terms of especially that shaker gank and, and whatnot. But unfortunately, got picked off once or twice because of lack of wards and whatever, whatever else. So this last replay here, we're going to jump into. And it's going to also be a Dendi replay. But instead of watching Dendi, I'm going to go to the other player's perspective and watch how he lanes against Dendi. Now again, this is a, a Dendi focus. This is a Dendi focus um, learning with Lumi series, but I think it's very important to see it how the other per player's perspective perspective is. Dendi's gonna be playing his famed Storm Spirit, and is indeed famed because his Storm Spirit is very very good. And the player that we're gonna be watching today is gonna be playing the Tiny. So Tiny is right here. Tiny's going to be going for a very, very standard, uh, or not really standard, but uh, a decent opening item set. For Tiny, it's very important to get some early game stats, because if you don't get those early game stats, you will not even be able to use your Avalanche to Toss Combo level 2. If you have 3 stats right here, you can have, I think, 241 mana. At level 2, and that's going to give you just enough for Avatar's combo at level 2. And he's going to be saving for a little bit of a quick bottle here. And we're going to see how quickly he checks Dendi's items. And I can't really blink, because that, that, that item checking aspect is going to last like half a second. If you blink, you miss. 
Uh, so yes, he is going to be linging against Dendi. Now in terms of Storm versus Tiny as a matchup, Tiny should have the slight advantage, especially a little bit early on because if you look at Tiny's base damage, really really high. He does have a decent animation, not the best, but a decent indeed. And it's going to be uh, I think a couple of last hits here and there. I have a toss at level 2. And uh, he's he's doing a fairly decent job in terms of lasting. I don't know how to call this guy. Um, Batty, I guess, is how I'm going to call him. Because that's what his name says. But yeah, he's going to be using a couple of Avalanche, to Avalanche Toss combo. I still don't really know what Dandy has. Maybe he checked and I missed it. I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt that he did check and we missed it. So let's quickly peek over in terms of what Dendi's item set has. Okay, Dendi's going to be going for a fairly standard storm starting item. A couple of mantles, salves, and a tango. He should actually be very careful in terms of salving up because uh, our tiny friend here could be going for a kill. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the mana, so never mind. So his bottle is coming, and let's see how he's going to be using his bottle right here. Now, as a melee hero lane against a ranged hero, there's a couple of tricks that you can use. For example, you could right click on the enemy hero and draw the creep aggro towards you. And as you draw the creep aggro towards you, you could back off. And the bottle and then and as you draw and as you back off, you know, the enemy creeps follow you. That basically you just pull the enemy creeps a little bit closer to your side and you can make last a little bit easier. Good thing that Tiny picked up the rune before the uh, 2 minute mark. That means that he could go for a gank right now, use most of his mana. He went for the kill. I thought he was going to go for the kill. But he just hit Dandy ones and be like, yo, back off. And um, good wards on the bot lane. A little bit late on the check, to be honest here. Because uh, he had the ward up the whole time and should have been checking right at the 2 minute mark. Uh, with the Vin Vision, he probably could not have gotten a kill on Dendi, but now you can see that, hey, Tiny says, I know that there's a rune on the bot lane. Let me push the wave a little bit here to ensure that I get the rune and uh, to keep on the harassment against Dendi. One of the better ways to deal with a a player that's just better than you in terms of last hitting and harassing will just nuke the hell out of them, like exactly what our tiny friend is doing right now. Because it doesn't matter how good their last hitting and denying is if they're constantly worrying about death. Like he, great check here by Tiny realizing that he just had a single tango and he's going to burn it right there. So yeah, it doesn't matter how great Dendi's last hitting ability is. If there's a Tiny coming your way with Avala Avatar's combo, you just have to back off. So I'm not too sure if that's what he had in mind, but the way that he's actually dealing with Dendi right now, it's great. It's really good. Of course, his hero allows him to do that. But a lot of people would just buckle under the superb lasting of Dendi. I would have just tossed right th that range tree right at Dendi. He missed. Uh, he used an avalanche and, and missed. But the toss would have hit for sure. And again, constantly harassing Dendi back. The rune is going to spawn in about 40 seconds. And again, this is really good time to again toss creeps or avalanche creeps and push the wave. And Dendi again forced to go back to his tower, forced to uh, protect his tower, forced to you get that exp, and that's going to allow. Our store, uh, our tiny, to grab those, uh, grab those runes. So with that double damage, it's gonna mow down the creep wave. The rune is gonna spawn in 14 seconds, 13 seconds or so. Boots of speed already up on tiny here, and storm Spirit, You don't even need a check. You can feel that storm Spirit. Just simply do not have the lane control and the last hit to get both a bottle and a boots of speed. Gonna drop an avalanche. Sees a sees a regen rune on the bot. And Dendi checks on the top rune right here. I'm going to tell you right now, Dendi has won the lane back. If the rune has spawned on the top lane, Dendi has won the uh, rune, uh, lane back. But because Dendi didn't have wards, I'm going to assume he didn't have wards. No, he didn't have wards. He guessed wrong, and because Tiny had wards, he was able to see a region on the bot lane. If it was a complete guess, if Dendi got the rune, he's got he won the lane back. And that's a testament of how well Dendi's playing. He's he got really hammered down early on, burned a lot of his restorative because the double runes that spawn for Tiny, great runes by the way, invis. Um, and I think Dendi's buying right now. Dendi's indeed buying. He just literally runs at the Tiny, and he just dies. So now again, I'm not using this replay to make Dendi look bad because probably one of the best uh, solo mid player there is, but. Earlier during that rune uh, rune hunt or rune guess, I personally hate when that happens. You go f you go check the rune earlier than the opponent, 
but it just spawns on the wrong side and there's really nothing you could do about it so um, the game goes on and and then he um, gets ganked a couple of times and I do believe he loses lane I've never I, I've not really fully watched the watch the replay to his completion but I was pretty impressed in terms of how this tiny is playing it's very methodical it's just really textbook straight up but again sometimes in a pub game you're gonna just meet a player that is just simply better than you so uh, one really good way to deal with it is just keep nuking them and go for the rune control and out regen the opponent out nuke the opponent and and there's really nothing they could do um, this is very reminiscent to let's say the bottle coast strat that a lot of uh, Philippine professional players use like last hit completely gets removed from the picture if you keep nuking them and they have to back off and you got constant region so that that's the benefit of getting an early bottle like our tiny did and having the necessary rune control uh, that he got and tiny goes to a bot lane because I do believe ooh, then he gets a rune here we're gonna watch the remainder of this engagement and then uh, I'm gonna close off the replay then the uh oh is he six don't think he's six he gets picked off or he is six but was I able to jump out very interesting so he got picked off here so as we close this replay we're gonna go and, and talk about some overarching themes that we've seen so in replay number one we've seen Dendi the importance of checking your opponent's items and really just great play by Dendi tangling blinking behind the enemy and then using his regen rune realizing that he has boots and the enemy does not outspeeding the enemy and just going for the kill so uh, knowing that you have you have the advantage and just go for the aggressive kill great great job by Dandy in game number one game number two we saw quite a bit of more harass uh, kind of passive harassing being, being done by Dendi instead of going for the last hits he kept the Necrolite back in multiple instances where Necrolite had the advantage he had a double damage rune in an instance but he was not able to trade hits with Dendi because Dendi is good positioning in between the creeps and also of his good skill usage of Kofi. Also that game we, we uh, really showcase why Dendi is one of the best players there is because even though he doesn't see where the enemy is, he knows where the enemy is. And throughout multiple games of Dota that will you will uh, grow to that kind of kind of map awareness. Last thing this very last game, we just saw how I guess I don't know who Batty is. He might be a very good player. I'm sorry I don't know who that is. But I could I, at least very safely say that he might not be at Dendi's level. But he was able to outlane Dendi simply because he just out nuked Dendi. So that's a, definitely a very good two to deal against um, an opponent that might be you. You might feel that they're better than you. So I talked about quite a bit here in terms of solo mid position. So hopefully you guys could have, have uh, learned a couple things from that. And I do believe that's it. Leave me a comment in the comment section below whether you guys thought this was helpful, um, whether you guys want to see different aspect of solo mid I did not cover. I do apologize if, if, if that's the case. And let me know if you guys want to see more aspects of you know, isolated um, parts of the game that you want, to, want me to go a little bit more in depth into. Uh, I really appreciate your comments. And uh, yep. Also, this is my new YouTube channel. So if you guys have not subscribed to it, I really appreciate it if you do subscribe to it. And then let your friends know that, hey, this guy is doing stuff like these. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, Luminous signing off. GG, guys.